Good morning, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Behavior-Based Interviewing. I'm Greg Smith. I'm the Curriculum Coordinator for the BioNetwork Bioprocessing Center. Our BioForum is scheduled to run today from 10 a.m. until approximately 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I encourage you to mark your calendars for next month's BioForum. More information and registration is available online at ncbionetwork.org. Thank you again for being here today. Your attendance is greatly appreciated. Uh, we will be discussing behavior-based interviewing. Behavior-based interviews have become the standard method for screening and selecting um, uh, applicants and future workers in just about any industry, particularly those uh, where the competition for just one po uh, position brings out dozens, sometimes hundreds of applicants. This tool hopefully will help employers determine if the candidates for their openings are a good fit for their position. That is their goal. And uh, if these uh, applicants have the necessary technical skills and even soft skills needed to be successful on the job. Typically, behavior-based interviews are held with a team of interviewers, usually three to five people. Uh, but it could be less. In some cases, it could be more. Alternating the questioning, uh, the questioning of the applicant. This can seem very overwhelming to the applicant as they sit there, but it is important for you to remain just as relaxed as you possibly can. Hopefully, after viewing this presentation, you'll know more about what to expect and, and can be somewhat more relaxed. Behavior-based interviewing does no good if one does not prepare at home before heading out for the interview. The Bio Network has already uh, developed an interactive e-learning virtual tool that will help you prepare for the interview. This is a highly interactive uh, tool, and we recommend before uh, you go on your interview brushing up on this behavior-based, uh, before brushing up on the uh, preparation skills, uh, before uh, learning your behavior-based interviewing skills. You can go to ncbionetwork.org slash interview to take advantage of this free resource. And I've posted that link uh, on the slide that you see in front of you uh, right now. For today's behavior-based interviewing web webinar, we're going to cover a variety of items. Uh, let me preface this presentation by saying this uh, statement that we have asked uh, that some people have asked me prior to the, the, this event. Yes, these tips can indeed be used for any industry with obviously tailored answers for the position that you're applying for. Just because I work in the life sciences, this method is common in that industry, uh, doesn't mean that these skills will not transfer to another industry. So if you're interviewing for any type of position, it helps to, to understand what behavior-based interviewing is, since that's what a lot of companies are using as their screening tool today. For today's presentation, I'll give you some informational statistics first. Uh, and I obtain these from employers in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, since that is who I have uh, contacts with. And these highlight just how important the interviewing format can be uh, in selecting the right candidate for, for a position. I'll compare this method to more traditional methods of interviewing briefly and discuss why the latter uh, really doesn't work much uh, anymore for employers today in, in selecting their uh, future workers. Then we'll move into a discussion of uh, categories of questions that will help employers to effect effectively um, assess the qualifications of the candidates they have selected to be interviewed. Uh, these include the categories that I have listed above, customer relations, interpersonal communication skills, informa uh, information gathering and decision making, working independently, leadership and influence, and that's a big one, uh, organization planning and problem solving, and that's probably one of the, m the most important ones, teamwork, creativity, uh, technical skills, and a few other uh, areas that some companies will um, uh, highlight as well. How you answer these questions gives an employer a kind of a snapshot of your past behavior and how you were likely to respond to a variety of situations if they were to hire you. After completing this extensive section, we'll, we'll briefly discuss contrary evidence scenarios, uh, and I like to think of these just simply as follow-up questions, uh, and we'll review how uh, closing questions are addressed. Lastly, I'll go over some preparation tips that I anticipate you'll want to know. 
uh, to effectively uh, stock your arsenal, if you will, of interviewing skills so you can land that job. I mentioned that I would uh, be giving you some statistics, and I have surveyed uh, four different companies, and as I mentioned before, they're all within the pharmaceutical industry, uh, to see what their ratios were for applicants to, to positions. Notice how competitive that the job market really is. You may think that just because you have uh, been appropriately trained in your, your schooling that you're the ideal candidate for a position, and you may well be, but consider that you are likely not the only person who has the technical skills to, to do the, the job that they're uh, hiring for. Many employers are looking for a person who can stand out based on their personal habits, their decision-making capabilities, their willingness to go the extra mile, uh, and how they behave under stress. These are where the behavior-based interviews can provide that insight into what type of an employee you're likely to be if you're uh, hired. The key is knowing that you may be asked these behavior-based questions, not all of them, but uh, many of them you're uh, likely to, to see in the future, and to adequately be prepared to answer them and set yourself apart from your competition. Notice that the percentages are very low considering the number of people that apply and the number selected for the interview. There's a huge difference, even in Company A, uh, one company that I spoke with, has for each opening has 300 or more applications and they only select five or six people to have an interview just for one position. All right, now let's look at behavior-based interviews and traditional job interviews a little bit closer. Traditional interviews review information on the resume and uh, primarily just ask questions. Sometimes they're open-ended questions about that information that's on the resume. The application may very well tell you what it is that you did uh, as far as job duties in your past employment, but it probably does not indicate how you behaved or reacted in certain situations. This is where behavior-based interviews, uh, interviewing techniques are more useful. Behavior-based interviews uh, focus on situations that you faced in the past, asking you to describe how you behaved or handled certain situations. Sometimes these interviews can be combinations of two or three of these techniques. So it's important to note that many employers will have a team of interviewers asking the questions, as I mentioned earlier, in behavior-based interviews. And they typically will uh, rate your responses while you're answering the questions or uh, immediately following your answers. And they may write notes for reminders when they review their ratings. So while you're sitting there uh, talking, you're likely to see your, your interviewers uh, taking notes. Also, you should keep in mind that your answers may likely gener generate additional follow-up questions from the panel of interviews. Try to anticipate uh, what these might be based on your response to the original questions. This is where practice comes in handy. Uh, always try to, to practice and anticipate the types of questions uh, that an employer may uh, ask you. It's important for me to caution you, though, not to embellish, uh, not to tell a lie, be honest with your answers. However, you can easily, especially if given time to prepare, turn negative situations into, into positive situations, particularly as it uh, relates to uh, behavior and, and uh, tasks that you've performed in the past. All right, with the relation to those categories, let's look at customer relations first. Uh, let's assume that you have or, or will at some point have a customer. The customer does not have to be an external customer to your company. It might be someone within your company uh, that your position supports in some way with the job that you do. Customer relations is a very important category that can either promote bad feelings if, it, if it's administered carelessly uh, or promote harmony and satisfaction if it's administered uh, in the right way. Let's look at some of the questions that, uh, sample questions that you may be asked in a behavior-based interview where it relates to customer relations. Describe a time when you felt it was necessary to change your actions in order to respond to the demands of a customer uh, or coworker or needs of a person. 
typically this type of question, if you're asked this, shows uh, how adaptable you are in, in certain situations and, and shows a spirit of cooperation. Tell us about a time when you were unable to influence a customer or a coworker to a different or a better course of action. What were the results and what would you do differently today uh, if you were put in the same situation? A question like this shows that sometimes you may fail to achieve a, a predicted outcome, but you can overcome that uh, situation with another result as well as you know what actions could have been applied at the time to get the desired result. So you have to think carefully about uh, how you want to answer a question like this so that you can put your best foot forward. Describe a situation where you received criticism of your work from a customer or a coworker and how you responded. What were the short-term and long-term results? Now this kind of a question puts you in a situation where your reaction to a situation is is uh, uh, measured by the interviewer. Uh, you may react in a defensive posture or you may uh, have reacted to the criticism in a positive way. Uh, how your reactions to the criticism can affect the actual outcome. So it's important to think about, uh, based on your personal experiences in your past positions, how you would answer this question. Describe the worst customer or coworker you've ever had, and we've all had some, uh, to work with and tell us how you dealt with the, uh, the situation. What was the outcome of this situation? This again is putting you in a, a negative situation, one that cannot always be avoided, uh, but it tells the interviewer how you were able to either adapt, how to uh, be successfully assertive and pressing for your desired outcome. Think about uh, the fact that the interviewer may know someone who you will encounter in this position um, that you are interviewing for, uh, who's likely to be this person, somebody in that company, and they're trying to put you in their workplace with somebody they already know their personality who may be a difficult person. How did you deal with it in the past? Uh, and how you answer that question is likely to give them an idea of how uh, you're going to do that in their company. And uh, the last one, uh, tell us about a time that you dealt with an irate customer, coworker, uh, and things didn't go the way you would have liked. What would you have done differently? Well, sometimes policies and regulations, particularly in this industry, prevent you uh, from dealing uh, or from being flexible in, in dealing with people. So be prepared. Have the appropriate response if this is the case, even if it means you had to call in a, a supervisor to mediate or make the decision. This can be, you know, the response the interviewer is seeking. Uh, also, in as I mentioned, in my industry, the life science industry, there's a lot of regulations and, and a lot of rules that you have to follow. And it's not just a matter of uh, being able to bend or break those rules at any time because you're, you're governed by regulatory agencies and uh, this is indeed the law that uh, you're having to, to make sure is uh, upheld. All right, let's look at uh, the, our second category, interpersonal communication skills. Closely re related to the customer relations in the last category is uh, the interpersonal and communication skills. And the first question that I'm going to show, the communication can either be verbal or nonverbal. Describe a situation which you were able to read a person effectively and guide your actions by understanding of, uh, the understanding of his or her needs. Here you're demonstrating to the interviewer that you uh, possess perception and you can tailor, if you want to use that word, the situation based on the other person's actions. Sometimes people can be, uh, come very rigid in the way they react in a, in a, uh, to another's words or actions and become very inflexible. If you are flexible enough to guide the situation uh, or to uh, uh, to a solution by using your understanding of their needs and satisfying those needs by changing your behavior, then the task at hand becomes easier. Sometimes that's not always the case, but uh, frequently that will help uh, get to a better uh, place down the road. Employers want to know that you don't consider yourself a know-it-all. 
uh, and you want to try to make sure that you don't come across that way in your interview. And uh, that while you may contribute to a better way of doing things, sometimes flexibility and compromise is needed. And uh, a lot of times that's what the, interview is, the interviewer is looking for in your behavior. Tell us about a time when your supervisor was not satisfied with an assignment you completed. How did you handle the feedback and what were the results? Notice that in a lot of these questions, they want to know what the situation was and they, then they want to know um, how, how it turned out. This scenario tells the interviewer that not all your work is going to be perfect, not all the time, and when it wasn't uh, and was pointed out, how did you respond to that feedback and what was the result? It's important that you uh, uh, answer that question honestly as well. Tell us about a situation you were involved with when clear communication was absolutely essential to the success of the situation, and then what happened. Well, this question gives you the opportunity to shine. Uh, here you can describe a situation from the past where you knew exactly what was needed to accomplish a task, and you were successful at achieving uh, that success. Describe a situation in which you were able to positively influence the action of others in a desired direction. Again, here's another chance for you to demonstrate with your response uh, what was the significant role in a successful task or project that you uh, participated in. What was your significant role in that project? It may be something as simple as demonstrating leadership, or teamwork, or having a positive ad, uh, attitude, uh, working hard, any of those things. Um, they're all very important, and you can highlight based on how you describe that situation the uh, positive uh, behaviors that uh, they're looking uh, for. Describe the most effective present your most effective presentation style. Uh, when have you used it, and what were the results? And here's another opportunity to demonstrate that you're a leader, uh, or at the very least, you're a good communicator. Uh, describe the situation for the interview uh, interviewer that's uh, asking you this with clear communication of the goals of the presentation and what it was that you accomplished uh, through that presentation. All right, let's move to information gathering and decision making. Making decisions based on sound facts is important to to any employer and how you made those decisions if you've had that opportunity in the past is even more important to them. Give us an example of a time when you used your fact-finding skills to gain information needed to solve a problem. Then tell us how you analyzed the information and came to a decision and what was the outcome. Uh, Providing the interviewer with the details of, uh, in this particular scenario, or a scenario that you uh, can think of in the past where your research was instrumental in obtaining a positive solution to a problem, will demonstrate these attributes uh, to them that you're resourceful and that you're uh, competent. Um, think of, uh, take these questions in advance and think about your past work experiences and try to to match those experiences with the, the type of question. There may be duplications in your answers to some of these questions, and that's okay. Uh, many times that I've sat in on, uh, on uh, your side uh, as the interviewee uh, in behavior-based interviews, there were two and three times I answered the same, uh, with the same scenario for two or three different questions. So and that's a possibility you may uh, run into. But try to anticipate uh, what kinds of questions uh, will generate those uh, multiple uh, answers. Give us an example of a time when you could not participate in a discussion or could not finish a task because you did not have enough information. And that's happened to all of us. What actions did you take to remedy the situation? Sometimes not having all the facts or information to make a decision or carrying out a task is, is critical and um, can delay a project uh, or prevent it from moving forward uh, altogether. Uh, getting and having the right facts, having all the facts, uh, can demonstrate prudence and caution not to jump into a situation 
without having all those facts. So sometimes it's best to, to sit back and and say, um, you know, we don't have all the facts. Let's do some more research. If you have had any type of position where that was the case, show the interviewer, describe for the interviewer that situation, and it will show the interviewer that you're not uh, going to jump into a situation without having all those facts. And that's important. They don't, and many times it saves money. Uh, and companies don't want to spend money. Uh, needlessly if if it's uh, not going to be something that's going to be uh, uh, a, a good decision on your part describe uh, excuse me describe your toughest assignment or project so far what made this assignment or project so challenging are well, the interviewers interested in knowing what uh, your challenges have been in past situations and why they were challenges this can uh, possibly provide the interviewer insight into your perspective on critical tasks uh, and how you set priorities to accomplish a goal. And priorities is a, a big part of just about any business. Uh, companies don't want you working on something that is a very low priority to them. They want you to uh, make decisions about what's going to be most effective uh, for their business and what's going to be most effective in the least amount of time. Uh, so setting priorities is, is what an interviewer could be looking for here. Give us an example of a time when you had to be relatively quick in coming to a decision. What were the results, and would you make the same decision again? Well, sometimes it becomes necessary to make snap decisions during times when uh, circumstances are, are critical. If you've ever had to make these snap decisions, the interviewer wants to know that the judgment is reasonable for the circumstance. Well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe you learned from that mistake. So answer honestly if you did learn from uh, a, a poor decision, uh, because learning from mistakes can be turned into a po uh, positive. None of us is perfect, and we've all made mistakes in our decisions in the past. Relay to us some examples of when you uh, used your own judgment to make decisions. What was the most difficult of these decisions? Why was it so difficult, uh, and what did you learn? Would you make the same decision again? Well, in some situations, we have to make decisions that are not always the best uh, business decision, but oftentimes they're the most practical uh, uh, for the situation. Personal judgments sometimes have to be made when, uh, when an interviewer asks. Uh, not only is it important to demonstrate that you've made these personal judgment calls in the past, but uh, it was either a correct call and typically that's measured by success, or it was an incorrect call. Uh, no adverse event occurred, but in hindsight there would have been a, another option. Obviously, if there's going to be an adverse event, you probably would not have made uh, a decision um, without getting a little bit more, uh, doing a little bit more research. All right, let's move to the next category, working independently. Employers are, are frequently concerned with time management and how you've met with deadlines, uh, how you've met deadlines. Uh, much of this has to do with your organizational skills, which we'll discuss in a few minutes too, but uh, let's, let's talk about working independently. Uh, the interviewer uh, in question one, tell us about a time in, the, in a past position when work was slow. What did you do? Uh, did you play video games uh, on the computer? Did you read a book? Did you uh, talk on the telephone? Those are not good answers, obviously, uh, very obvious, uh, for very obvious reasons. The interviewer is concerned by it when they ask this question, how you spend your downtime. The saying, time is money, uh, really is true. If during your downtime you're able to research for future projects or organize your working environment, let the interviewer know that this is part of your personality to do this. Don't give any indication that when you're idle that you're not productive. That would not uh, uh, be the appropriate response to a question like this. Tell us about a time when you went beyond the call of duty to get a job done. What were the results of the extra efforts you put forth? Well, extra effort is important uh, to supervisory personnel, and extra effort is important to people 
who are typically the interviewers in behavior based interviews as well um, they you know supervisory personnel are, are the people who have the hiring decisions and they're the ones that are going to be asking you these questions. Anyone who's willing to give more of themselves than what is required as a minimum is appreciated and valued with the company. Highlight instances in your past where this was the case uh, from your past work history. What time management techniques or organizational techniques do you use? Tell us about a project where they really benefited you. Uh, relating instances that that actively demonstrate good use of your time is important. Tell the employer certain tips or tricks that you have used to effectively manage your time in the past to become better organized. Give us an example of an important goal you set and tell us about the progress you have made in reaching that goal. Would you do it that way again and why? Uh, when a person can set and achieve goals, uh, whether they have done it in their past workplaces uh, or not, uh, they probably have done it in their personal lives or, or any other relevant situation. And an employer will be uh, duly impressed, mainly because they'll be confident that you can achieve their goals and objectives as well. Find instances from your past uh, where you set and achieved a goal. Even if it wasn't in the workplace, it could have been in school, it could have been uh, again, like I said, in a, a personal situation, relate those successes. Relate the failures, uh, if you have any too, and how you learn from them. Make a success out of it uh, eventually. Uh, you can do that. Tell us about a specific time when you could not meet a deadline. How did you handle the situation and what were the, uh, what were the results? At some point in time, we've all failed uh, to meet a deadline for one reason or another. Uh, I'm guilty of that myself. Whatever you do, don't make excuses for failing to achieve the deadline. Don't come across as a, a whiner or a complainer. But if there is a valid reason, such as a critical component to the project that you were working on that was delayed and that was out of your control, give those facts. Be factual. Give an accurate explanation as to why uh, you uh, failed to meet that deadline. You can turn the failure into a positive if the uh, result, um, even if the result was not favorable at the time. Uh, let's look at leadership and influence. One of the uh, most important characteristics employees look for uh, in new hires is how they have gotten along with others. And many look for your role in various projects or tasks. Were you a leader or were you a follower? Were you able to influence the team of coworkers to complete the task more efficiently, more quickly, less costly, etc.? Let's look at the first uh, question that they may ask you. Tell us about a time when you had to work with others to gather information to understand different perspectives. Notice that these aren't yes and no answers. You have to give them a scenario from your past. In this scenario, they're looking for how you work with people in gathering information to complete a task. Uh, sometimes, and others may not agree with your perspective about uh, the information to be uh, obtained, but the approach that, uh, that will be used or even the resources that are chosen to gather information may be what they're looking for. Your response can show both leadership, in other words, you're able to convince the team that your approach achieved a successful outcome, or your response can show compromise, in other words, that you're a team player. Either way, you've, you've become, you've turned something that could have been a negative into a positive. You can either be a leader, you can either be a compromise, uh, compromiser. Describe for us a situation in, in which you got uh, people to change from the way they were doing something to the way you had suggested. How did you accomplish this, and what were the results? The scenario here is similar to the one above, but demonstrates more descriptively your leadership qualities, your individual leadership qualities. Be detailed in your response, but don't be er overly uh, verbose. Don't be conceited about your role in the situation that you, that you choose to answer with. 
sometimes that may turn people off and they may think that you're bragging about yourself. Keep the focus on teamwork if that was the case. And yes, be sure to highlight your role as a leader if you were the leader in that particular situation. Tell us about an unpopular idea you had that you were able to sell uh, to people at work. Here's an opportunity to, to brag just a bit. Sometimes others cannot see exactly what an outcome will be unless it is explained just right, unless you're able to demonstrate positive results from an idea. If you're ever in this situation in the past, now's your opportunity to, to, opportunity, excuse me, <clears throat> to think about what you said, what you did, and how you influenced the group to see things your way. Brag, but don't brag uh, with anything other than facts. Have you ever had to terminate someone? Tell us about this situation. Well, not all of us have had the, um, I almost said pleasure, not all of us have had the opportunity to have to let somebody go, but letting people go from their employment is one of the hardest things any one uh, of us can do in the workplace. It, every time that I ever had to let somebody go, it was hard for me, and it's nothing that I really took pleasure in, uh, even though Sometimes those decisions ended up being the best thing for me personally, the best thing for me professionally, and the best uh, business decision for the companies I work for. Your decisions and your actions are potentially affecting these employees' futures professionally and economically as well. But sometimes this just has to be done. When relating your experiences, try to keep the personal feelings you may have had about this task out of the interview. Potential employers want to know that you are able to separate personal feelings from professional necessities. And I didn't say professional feelings, I said professional necessities. Because sometimes it is necessary to, to let somebody go uh, to improve morale, to improve productivity, uh, and for obvious reasons to uh, uh, make for a better business uh, environment. The interviewers are, are going to understand that your position and task of terminating an employee was indeed necessary, and they want to know that if you're ever in this position of leadership, you're capable of making decisions that are in the company's best interest. And nobody's going to terminate something, somebody unless it's going to be in the company's best interest. Describe an incident when poor quality skills on someone else's part damaged something you were trying to accomplish. How did you handle this, and what were the results long-term and short-term? Not all employees have the skills to be able to do t all the tasks that may be asked of them. And sometimes underqualified workers can make the entire team suffer in many different ways. The interviewer wants to know that you, as a past leader, were able to rectify situations where poor quality work was recognized uh, and that the necessary steps were taken to uh, turn the situation around to make it uh, positive again. Again, this is one of those questions where it will pay off for you if you can be well prepared to explain what you did if a situation like this ever happens to you. Organization, planning, and problem solving is the, our next category. Organizing, planning, and problem solving are more personal skill sets that can allow you to have, uh, effectively um, exploit your strengths, your individual strengths. Every employer wants to hire someone that can organize their work, solve problems uh, that may arise on the job. And just like your preparation for behavior-based interviewing to help you get a job, your planning of everyday tasks uh, will get and keep you ahead, too. The key to solving <clears throat> problems in the workplace is understanding exactly what the problem is. Let's look at this question. Describe your most recent effort which required researching, planning, and organizing. If you know what the problem is, you can determine the best method for achieving success. Highlight instances uh, where you were able to solve a problem, complete a project uh, through effective research or, or something of that nature. It may be that your research led you to investigate others who successfully completed the task at hand. Sometimes it's best not to reinvent the wheel. See how others have effectively uh, researched and uh, planned and organized to accomplish a, a particular task. Uh, you know, look to colleagues, look to uh, 
coworkers, look to friends uh, that that may be um, better organized than you may be. It may be that the research leads you to what I like to call uh, an epiphany moment, where the answer simply falls in your lap. Describe how you conducted the research, made the plan to get the task accomplished, and then kept yourself uh, organized through completion of that particular task. Give us, uh, give us an example of a problem you faced on the job and tell us how you solved it. How you solved it. Tell us about the feedback you received regarding your solution. Well, sometimes the path to solving a problem leads us down different paths based on the feedback we get while we're doing our research. Uh, plans can sometimes change, and sometimes along the way this can lead to a more effective resolution uh, of our problems, too. Feedback from uh, others will uh, frequently change our methods for accomplishing our goals. Be sure that you can relate to the interviewer the details of how your decision-making skills based uh, on this feedback loop uh, were instrumental in making your task successful. If you haven't got the idea by now, you, you hopefully uh, have, you have to think about what you've done and knowing these questions that may be asked for you in behavior-based interviews ahead of time hopefully will help you. Let's look at the third example we have here. Tell us about a time when, when it was difficult to get a job done. What methods or techniques did you use to ensure the job was complete and what were the results? Well, sometimes obstacles will get in your way uh, of achieving your goals successfully. Uh, when presenting this question to you, the interviewer is looking uh, for how you were able to overcome a difficult situation and then modify or adjust your plan of action to successfully solve that problem. This shows them <coughs> excuse me. This shows them that you have creativity, which we're going to talk about in a minute, and determination to see a task through to completion. What did you do on your last job in order to be effective with organization, priorities, and planning? And be specific. Well, assuming you've had a last job, and some of you on the, the presentation today may not have ever had a job, uh, but assuming you've had a last job, this should be a fairly simple question to answer. Recall from your memory these specifics from this particular instance and relate them in a detailed fashion. Key in this answer is to identify priorities. Prioritizing effectively makes planning easy. Now, for someone who may not have had a last job, someone who's entering the job market for the first time, then relate something related to a responsible task you've, that you've had to accomplish. Maybe something from school, if you're a student right now, or from a volunteer organization you were a part of, or from a project you were asked to complete for a family member, friend, or neighbor, and so on. Tell us about a time when you had to make decisions between two alternative ways of doing something. How did you go about making your choice? What were the results? And would you make the same choice again and why? Most of us have had to make decisions at some point in our lives where there were multiple options. Um, this, again, is one of those questions that if you knew it could be asked of you, you can probably find a situation from your past that makes answering this question pretty simple. Be sure to emphasize that if there was a better way to do uh, accomplish uh, successfully that task or, or to do that task, that you chose otherwise and then be able to explain why you made that decision. Then proceed uh, with an explanation of what you may have done differently. Um, sometimes there's more than one right way to get to the same goal. Uh, those different uh, alter alternative ways may be based on uh, what is best financially, uh, economically to achieve those goals, what is less work to achieve those goals, what's more fun to achieving those goals, and so on. So there's lots of different ways that you can uh, answer this question. Uh, recognize that you have, uh, recognizing that you've realized that there is a better way to achieve a successful outcome will tell the interviewer that you, even in light of the wrong choice that uh, you may have made, but you know, you learn from your mistakes and you'd make a better choice at some point in the future. Okay, let's talk about teamwork briefly. 
Teamwork is one of the things that most interviewers would like to see responses that are given um, positively in behavior-based interviews. Being able to work with others to achieve one goal, uh, to achieve it successfully, is an integral part of a, just about every business. And this is one of the easiest behavior-based categories for anyone to answer. Most of us have worked with others successfully in the past. Uh, very few of us have accomplished a great deal of success without the help of others. What actions did you do in your last job to contribute towards a, a teamwork environment? Be specific and give examples. Think and prepare before your interview um, of the most impressive response you can give to this question. Uh, key in on your role uh, on the team when you were doing this and be able to explain not only what your contribution to the team was, but what aspect every person on the team contributed to, uh, to having a successful outcome. Sometimes it's good to highlight recognitions of your team uh, members on, and how they contributed as well and that you were part of that success. Describe a time when you had to use others as a resource for uh, solving a problem and what were those results. Using others as resources lets the interviewer see that when you're lacking expertise in a particular area to achieve success, that not only are you able to fill the gap uh, where that expertise is lacking, but willing to bring in the experts that you need to get the very best results that you can. There's nothing wrong with saying, I can't do this by myself, I need help. I've done it many times, uh, and uh, the fact that you uh, recognize that you can't do it by yourself, and companies don't want you to do it by yourself, frankly. They want you to use resources and, and other people uh, to work together in uh, solving a problem. Tell us about a time when you knew someone was not being as efficient as possible in doing his or her work. What did you do and what were the end results? Well, part of being a team is recognizing uh, who is not pulling their weight on the team, whether it's intentional or not. Uh, it's not the job of the entire team to, to uh, either motivate each part of the team or do their part uh, or replace that part that's ineffective. Good management will never allow one member of a team to prevent success. They'll fix whatever problems they have. So the very best outcome is, uh, can be achieved. Again, most of us can relate a past incident where this has occurred. A key here is to focus on positive aspects of the teamwork and the success. Yes, sometimes people don't pull their weight, <coughs> excuse me, and it's not uh, appropriate for you as a team member to, to make yourself look bad, and, and, and I hate to use this word, be the tattletale, but uh, let management see that, that uh, not all team members have uh, uh, done what they're supposed to. It happens. People uh, don't do what they're supposed to, and, and management in most cases is aware, is aware of who has pulled their weight and who has not. Describe an incident when poor quality skills uh, on someone else's part Damage something you were trying to accomplish, and how did you handle this? It's very similar to the uh, situation I just described above. Uh, it's just worded a little bit differently with an emphasis on skills rather than efficiency or motivation. But the resolution may be very simple, as, uh, similar to what it was in the, the past question as well. Tell us about a project where you had to deal with procrastination of a group member. What was your role? How did you handle that procrastination? What was the, what was the result? Um, some people can procrastinate. Um, others become obsessive compulsive about getting a project to completion. I don't uh, I don't like to consider myself a procrastinator, but I will say that I am a little bit OCD. Um, either personality type can bring stress and pressure on team members. Procrastination can be uh, can lead to missed deadlines. This not only affects your entire team, but it may affect the bottom line of the company. So if a situation similar has occurred as part of your past, how did you handle it? How did your team handle it? Be prepared to answer in case you're asked this particular question. Creativity is another example, uh, another uh, category. Creativity can be closely associated with problem solving. However, some problems can be solved simply with research, planning, and organization. 
creative person finds ways to get uh, the answer, sometimes not in conventional ways. Sometimes they're very unique. Keep in mind that if you're interviewing for a highly regulated industry, such as the life science industry that I'm in, sometimes problem solving uh, using creativity is not that simple. There are rules and procedures that have to be followed. However, the creative individual is one who shows determination, one that has a never say never or can do attitude. Some interviewers like this. Tell us about your most difficult assignment. How did you go about getting it done? What were the hurdles and what were the results? Well, problem solving frequently involves hurdles and barriers uh, that get in the way of success. Overcoming these barriers sometimes involve creative, involves creative solutions. Interviewers want to know uh, from you what situations you've experienced in the past where your creativity helped in resolving the problems. Should be a fairly simple uh, uh, scenario to describe. Describe the most creative work-related projects you've completed, what made them different than other project, projects. Here's your chance to be very specific about things you've done in the past. Recall the most significant project you worked on and describe in detail uh, your creative ideas and contributions that made the project a success. Remember, interviewers want to know what makes this different from other projects, so think back and make this a good one. Describe a problem for which your first solution did not work so that you were forced to try other solutions. What were the hurdles and what were the results? What was the reaction uh, to the delay? Interviewers recognize that not all your ideas for solving a problem may work uh, or may not work right away. If there's an instance from your past work experience that stands out uh, where the resolution to the problem was delayed through implementation of your ideas, then be prepared to describe, to describe what happened. Describe the most significant written document, report, or presentation that you've completed. What was the biggest challenge? Most of us have had to communicate at some point in time with written documentation or presentation and getting a message across. Sometimes it seems easier when people can visualize your thoughts in writing, but conveying a message effectively in writing or through a presentation can be challenging. People don't always know intent uh, from words. They can't see emotion and things like that that you've put into it. So um, you got to be careful. Uh, describe for the interviewer what challenges you've had uh, that you've experienced in the past where you had to convey a message in writing and what made it difficult. Describe, if you can, how you overcame that, that particular challenge. All right. Let's look, move to technical skills, and I'm going to go through these uh, kind of briefly because everybody's technical skills may be different. But you may be asked uh, word, uh, how good you are with uh, word processing programs. Uh, you may be asked to do several different types of things that I have listed here on the screen. Just so they can, you can demonstrate for a company that you know how to do some of these things. As a matter of fact, what you see here uh, on this list, uh, I got from an actual company, uh, and this is one of the things they actually have people do. They have them paginate uh, different uh, types of Word documents. They'll have them format text. They'll have them uh, show how to put uh, 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 watermarks that say confidential on a large uh, or on a Word document. So things such as that. They may ask you to demonstrate how to do it. When we're talking about Excel spreadsheets, uh, sometimes interviewers are going to want you to demonstrate that you know how to uh, record and manipulate data. Um, there are several rules and procedures that uh, sometimes are required, and they're going to want to know that you understand what those are. Uh, if you're in management, uh, Microsoft Project is something that uh, a lot of managers uh, require their people to, to understand, and they're going to ask you some questions to make sure that you do know how to, to do that. Simply put, if they ask you if you know how to do something and you don't, you say you don't know how to do it. Don't say that you know it's something that you cannot do. And I've actually put one um, a slide in the presentation here that uh, relates to. Um, the life science industry that I'm a part of, so that uh, 
uh, you can understand, and this has happened to me when I've interviewed for jobs. I've had people uh, ask me to do calculations on how how to uh, do certain problems and how uh, to understand uh, how things uh, are done in, in industry, what the real world is all about. You may be asked some of those. And then there are other uh, questions that you may see. Why did you enjoy, or what did you enjoy most about uh, a particular job, or what did you enjoy least about it? Again, these aren't yes and no answers. They're asking you, very similar to traditional interview questions, uh, what what kinds of things based on your resume uh, that you may have or your application that you may uh, they may be able to glean a little bit more information about you. Uh, what would you have to change in order to, for you to stay at your present job? Uh, tell us what types of professional growth that you've invested in yourself in the past so many months, eight months uh, or so. Uh, we see you attended such and such a school. What did you find to be the most valuable part of your education? And so on. Now, I mentioned that there were contrary evidence questions, and I like to think of contrary evidence questions as just simply follow-up questions. Contrary evidence questions could be uh, something like, you've described your success on this particular project. Now, what problems did you encounter? Or what did you not do as well as what you might have done? Uh, in retrospect, is there a better way that you could have done something? Those kinds of questions are called contrary uh, evidence questions, and you can expect those based throughout the entire interview based on your uh, responses. And then there are your typical closing questions. You've given us a lot of information. Is there uh, anything uh, else you'd like to know about uh, or like to tell us about you for us to consider you for this position. Or once we've decided to offer a position, we're going to do some background checks on you, some drug screenings and so on. Based on this information, is there anything that you want to share with us at this time? It's happened to me a lot of times. I've gone through uh, interviews for an hour or two hours, and then somebody you know, says they have a, a criminal record, and I've wasted my time. Uh, more or less, because in my industry, you can't hire somebody that has a, a criminal background. Uh, is there anything that would prevent you from accepting this position? And do you have any questions for us? And if I met your supervisor, this is one that I have heard many, many times. Uh, is there anything that they would say about you? Additional information you can expect at the end of the interview, uh, an explanation of the time frame for making a decision uh, will probably be given to you. They may remind you uh, that the interview questions and, and proceedings that you've just been through are all confidential. Please don't talk about it. They may give you a contingent offer. They may not. A uh, contingent offer may be we're going to check your references first, and if everything checks out, uh, you may be uh, given this offer. Would you accept it or not? Um, at that point, you're in good shape unless there's something that your references may uh, bring to mind that uh, or bring to bear that, that would be negative. Uh, and then the interview will typically be concluded at that point. Now, there are some preparation tips that I want to briefly go over, and we're just about out of time, but I'll, I'll go over these real quick. Be familiar with the job that you're interviewing for. If you know nothing about the position that you're interviewing for and they ask you questions about it, you're going to seem kind of uh, out of place, and it's going to probably make you very nervous. Review your past ex uh, experience and, and skills that you have and draw from those. Relate to the position you're interviewing for, um, if possible, and if known, uh, what that position is. Sometimes they, they may have multiple positions, and they'll, based on your questions and or the questions and answers that you give to those questions, they may consider you for a different position than what you were hoping to get. Use quotes, and I've done this, uh, past performance reviews. I've actually taken past performance review comments and, and used those as what uh, examples of what people have said about me. Answer with brief descriptions of the situation or task, what you did to accomplish, and what was the result. Make sure that they are measurable results. Uh, use recent examples if possible because they're going to be fresher in your mind uh, and more uh, relative to the way you are today. 
uh, practice with sample questions and try to have some past successes uh, and sometimes failures that you've learned from and uh, be able to talk about those. I would like to remind you that we do have that uh, a, a job interviewing uh, program if you go to ncbionetwork.org forward slash interview uh, that uh, you can actually get some uh, additional job interviewing uh, techniques, preparation tips. And if you have any questions or contact, I know there's been uh, there's been very few questions submitted in the chat box, and and I hope that means that I've answered a lot of your questions. Uh, but uh, if you will uh, copy down my uh, email address and send me an email, I can send you copies of this presentation. I can send you the, the PowerPoint uh, slide. I even have about three times the number of questions that I'm willing to uh, send to you in a digital uh, format. Uh, from what I went over on the, the various categories of questions. Uh, and I will say this, uh, those questions all came from actual industries. These aren't questions that I made up. These are questions that come from actual industry personnel that they ask during behavior-based interviews. But feel free to send me an email that I have listed up here on the screen, and I'll be happy to send you any information that you're looking for uh, in, the past, uh, in relation to uh, this particular uh, presentation. And uh, Jim's telling me that I have uh, no questions, so we'll move on. And uh, I'd, I'd like to, again, uh, thank you as we wrap up today. We do have uh, a bioform next month, uh, Growing the Raw Materials for Great Based Industry in the Western North Carolina. This is on Wednesday, May the 8th, beginning at 9 a.m., and registration for this event is already being taken online, and I'd like to thank you today for your participation, and I sincerely hope you'll be able to, to use some of the information I presented. I know there's a lot, and I have talked very quickly to be able to try and get it all in in, in the hour scheduled time. Uh, thank you to you. Thanks to North Carolina Bio Network for making this presentation possible. Uh, this concludes our webinar today, and on behalf of Bio Network, uh, have a great day. Thank you.